As a landscape photographer, you're gonna have to go through a process of selecting a particular camera system for your landscape photography needs. Now, in this section, we're gonna be talking about cameras, lenses, and different accessories. And I want to kick off this particular section by talking about cameras, because that's probably the very first thing you're gonna look at as you assemble your landscape photography kit. Now, if you already invested in a particular camera system and you have cameras, lenses, or potentially even accessories from a particular brand, you might be wondering if you made the right choice for landscape photography. And that's where a lot of people get stuck. They see announcements and new camera releases from other brands and they wonder, did I make a right choice? Is my camera good enough for landscape photography? Unfortunately, that's a big pitfall for many photographers because what they end up doing is trading systems, going out and selling everything they've got and then buying something new and because camera manufacturers leapfrog each other all the time you might be stuck in a loop in a constant loop where the grass is always greener on the other side don't make that mistake don't think that what you have is bad stick with what you already have because at the end of the day this is going to cost you a lot of money if you're going to chase after the best of the best if you haven't invested in a camera system or perhaps you're lightly invested in a particular brand, then you are probably free to choose whatever options there are on the market. And if that's the case, then I have a few suggestions that will hopefully make it easier for you to select a camera system. Now, the very first thing that I personally look at when looking at any system out there is how many lenses they already have available for that particular brand. And that's a very important consideration because what you want to make sure is that there are enough good performing lenses for landscape photography needs that are native to that camera. Now, there will be lots of new players out there and there are some recent uh, camera manufacturers that maybe come up with a new system and they say, well, you can adapt pretty much any lens you want as long as you use an adapter. And the problem with that is that uh, you might have good luck with using those lenses for particular needs like portrait photography. But once it comes to landscapes, the problem with using adapters is that there are two mounting points. And if there is any misalignment on either side, you might have issues with getting sharp images. Another problem with using adapters is that every camera system has a different size when it comes to anti-aliasing or the low pass filter. And the thickness of the low pass filter is actually important because if you're gonna try a lens from uh, one manufacturer on a different system and that thickness is different, you might have severe issues with getting very sharp corners. So keep that in mind as you look at camera systems. Ideally, you want to look at a manufacturer or choose from a manufacturer that has a very nice set of lenses that you can use for landscape photography without having to use any adapters. In addition to lenses, there are other important factors that you need to consider. And those might be camera system size, its weight, its price, or maybe even ergonomics. Now to me, these are all important obviously, but Nowadays, I'm looking at something different, which is where the camera manufacturer is heading. For example, is the manufacturer actually creating innovative products that are in demand? Are they listening to customer feedback? Are they perhaps modifying their cameras, lenses, and accessories based on customer feedback? When it comes to DSLR versus mirrorless, there are pros and cons to each. DSLRs have been out for a very long time. It's a proven concept. And we know that DSLRs work really well for landscape photography. But the future is clearly with mirrorless. And the reason why is because mirrorless is mechanically simpler. DSLR cameras have sophisticated mirror mechanism, and that's just another component of the camera that is prone to fail. In addition to that, they take up unnecessary space and add to the weight of the camera. Now, the reason why we needed those mirror mechanisms was because the cameras are designed to look through the lens into the viewfinder. And nowadays with mirrorless technology, we no longer need that because what's happening with mirrorless is that you're actually seeing everything that the sensor sees. Instead of the light getting projected into the lens, bouncing through a mirror box into a pentaprism prism and eventually into the viewfinder, it's all much simpler. The light goes directly into the sensor, the sensor sees all the light, and then that information either gets displayed on the LCD or the electronic viewfinder of the camera. Just because of this alone, mirrorless cameras unlock some potential that we've never had with DSLR cameras. For example, as simple as autofocus sounds, 
it actually is quite sophisticated in a DSLR camera. The reason why is because the light that passes through the lens has to bounce off a secondary mirror into a phase detection system. And if you have a lens that's miscalibrated with that particular body that you're using, then you might end up with blurry pictures. And that creates a lot of frustration. Gladly, mirrorless doesn't have this problem because what happens is the light goes through the lens right onto the camera sensor. And the camera is capable of taking that information from the sensor and displaying it either on the viewfinder or the LCD. And as the autofocus system is engaged, it can actually calculate information on the fly. And the good news is, Back in the day when mirrorless just started, autofocus systems used to be contrast detect only, which meant they were slow. Nowadays, cam camera manufacturers are now coming up with phase detection systems built right onto the sensor. And what happens is the speed of the auto autofocus system in its complexity is getting not just as good as DSLR, but it's actually getting better, especially when it comes to tracking subjects. Now, some people might argue that autofocus is not needed for landscape photography, and in many cases, I agree. I personally rely quite a bit on manual focus. I use the live view feature of my DSLR, zoom into a particular area of a scene, focus, and I'm good. However, if the market wants autofocus and all these new features in mirrorless cameras, and there's mass adoption of a different product, that means it is going to be the future. But this doesn't mean that you need to throw away your DSLR. Keep in mind, there's still lots of people out there who use DSLRs and they own millions of lenses and accessories for them. For that reason alone, DSLRs are here to stay. Let's now talk about sensor size. There's a direct correlation between sensor size, system size, image quality, and price. Basically, the larger the sensor, the bigger the footprint of the system is going to be, the higher the image quality, and the higher the price. Let's now talk about camera system size first. As you go through the process of selecting a camera, you'll realize that cameras with larger sensors come with larger lenses. And there is a simple explanation as to why. Basically, in order to be able to accommodate that size of image sensor, the lens that's attached to the camera needs to be able to produce large enough of image circle. Now, I've got three cameras in front of me right here. I've got an APS-C size camera, full frame, and a medium format camera. Now let's talk about how these cameras are going to be different in terms of system size. This camera with an APS-C sensor is going to have the smallest lenses because those lenses are specifically designed for that size sensor, whereas a full frame camera is going to have larger lenses. Now the biggest lenses of them all is going to be without a doubt on this medium format camera. And that's something that I need to consider as I build my landscape photography kit. Because if I want something that's going to be lightweight and I need to travel a lot, perhaps I go for something smaller. Whereas if that is not a big consideration, then I need to potentially look at something bigger. Next, we've got image quality. Now, as I pointed out earlier, larger sensors will yield better image quality. And there's a simple reason for that. For us landscape photographers, we need as much resolution as possible. So it's a very simple fact that a larger sensor, given the same pixel size, is going to simply yield more resolution. As a result, for landscape photography needs in particular, the camera that has a larger sensor is going to produce the best image quality. Lastly, you have to consider price. While many landscape photographers would love the image quality of a medium format system, the fact is those can be tens of thousands of dollars. For that reason alone, they're out of reach for many photographers. Instead, most landscape photographers end up choosing a smaller camera system that has an APS-C or full frame sensor. Now, personally, I think that full frame has the best balance of price, image quality, and size. So if someone asks me what system I would recommend among the three today, I would say it's definitely full frame. Now, because full frame cameras are very common and popular, there are plenty of great options out there that provide enough resolution, dynamic range, and high ISO performance for landscape photography needs. But don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with APS-C either. In fact, if you're not planning to make huge prints, you might as well go with a smaller system because one of the main benefits of having a larger sensor with more resolution is being able to make larger prints. And if that's not something that you need, then just go with a smaller system. It will save you plenty of money and weight on your back. 
Now I've been mentioning resolution quite a bit. And one of the things that I've been saying is that larger sensors with more resolution are better for landscape photography. Well, you might be wondering why, because aside from larger prints, what other benefits would you get from higher resolution? Well, first of all, you have one main benefit, which is downsampling. If you were to take a smaller resolution camera and a higher resolution camera, obviously they would yield different size prints. But if you were to take the higher resolution camera and match the size of the smaller resolution camera, the process of downsampling where basically pixels are being squeezed closer together results in sharper images. And that's a main benefit of being able to shoot with a high resolution camera. Lastly, there's also benefit to having a high resolution sensor during post-processing. In addition to being able to crop an image and not losing too much resolution as a result of cropping, you also have extra wiggle room when doing lens corrections. Something else worth mentioning in regards to resolution is that we have now great technology innovations taking place in the camera industry. Some camera manufacturers figure out ways how to provide image stabilization right inside the camera body. And this is known as in-body image stabilization. Now, the benefit of this in-body image stabilization is that in addition to being able to provide stabilization to lenses, this technology allows to shift the sensor one pixel at a time to essentially provide more resolution. This essentially means that even if you have a smaller camera system, you might be able to get even more resolution out of that system in the future. Let's now talk about dynamic range. In landscape photography, the dynamic range performance of your camera can be actually very important because that's how you recover highlight and shadow information. Now, as landscape photographers, we come across situations where we have high contrast scenes all the time, for example, at sunrise and sunset. And if you have a camera that has good dynamic range performance, you might come back with more information that you can use then to recover all that highlight and shadow detail. Now, I've talked to photographers who worry about dynamic range almost too much because they see one camera, maybe it's their camera, and then there's another camera that's half a stop or maybe even stop better in dynamic range performance. And they think that they need to change their camera just because of that. To be honest, unless your camera is so old that it is two stops or worse in dynamic range performance compared to the most current model, you shouldn't worry about it too much. Because at the end of the day, there are certain ways you can actually recover plenty of information. You can use filters that allow you to capture more detail from the scene, or you can resort to different techniques, even in post-processing, where you can blend images together and recover all that potential data. One more thing to add to dynamic range is that some cameras are specifically built for landscape photographers to yield very high levels of dynamic range. For example, this Nikon D810 right here has ISO 64 at which it yields such high dynamic range that it even exceeds the dynamic range of many other medium format cameras. So do your research, check out some great resources online that provide useful information about different cameras and their dynamic range performance. Check out where your camera is at. If it's not too bad, maybe a stop or less of a difference, then don't worry about it. But if the range is too big and your camera is maybe too old, then consider investing in a different camera because dynamic range does matter. When it comes to image quality, another factor to consider is the high ISO performance of your camera. Now, as a landscape photographer, you might be wondering, why do I even care? In most situations, I'll be shooting at very low ISOs anyway. But there are two particular situations where high ISO performance might be important. One is astrophotography. In astrophotography, you'll just have to often increase ISO. And the second one is going to be when shooting in windy conditions. And in windy conditions, the only purpose why you would want to increase ISO is to be able to increase the shutter speed so that maybe the uh, foreground elements that you have, the bushes or some of the flowers, for example, that they're not going to appear blurred. And in such situations, you will see that cameras with larger sensor sizes will yield higher ISO performance. So if you find yourself in situations where you shoot astrophotography a lot, or perhaps you want to be able to increase ISO and work in those windy conditions, you might want to consider investing in a camera with the largest possible sensor. So far, I've been focusing on image quality. And while it's important, there are other factors that you need to consider for landscape photography. For example, weather sealing. If you have a camera that's properly weather sealed, you'll be prepared to shoot in those cold conditions or maybe even rainy conditions and 
take amazing pictures. But if you don't have a weather sealed camera, then you might come back with nothing. So keep that in mind. Another factor to consider is battery life. If you have a camera that has a very good battery life, you'll find that in those cold conditions, that when the battery is going to die faster, you're still gonna be able to take pictures. The worst thing that can happen is if you're capturing something very unique and beautiful and your battery's dead. And lastly, you should take a look at some of the features that are built specifically for landscape photography in mind. One of them is live view performance. If you have a good camera that has solid implementation of live view, you should be able to fire it up, zoom in all the way to your subject and focus precisely and see that your subject is sharp. And if that's the case, you're good to go. Unfortunately, some live view implementations are poorly made where you zoom in and everything is just so fuzzy that you cannot properly focus. Also, there might be other camera features that might be very useful for you to have, such as GPS, intervalometer, time-lapse features, or maybe something like split screen, which can be very useful when composing your images in live view. In conclusion, as you can see, there's so many different considerations you have to keep in mind as you go through the process of selecting a particular camera system. Now, we're gonna be talking about lenses and accessories that form a part of your landscape photography kit later on, but what I wanted to reiterate in this section is that there are so many great camera options out there. If you're happy with your camera and you find that you can take great pictures, don't worry about changing anything. Don't worry about swapping systems because at the end of the day, you're the one who takes the pictures and you can take phenomenal pictures with any camera today.